Hello and welcome. Let's talk about hemorrhagic shock or hypovolemic shock. Classification of hemorrhagic shock. Class 1. Blood volume lost as percentage of total less than 15%. Class 2. 15 to 30%. Class 3. 30 to 40%. Class 4. More than 40%. Pathogenesis of hemorrhagic or hypovolemic shock. In case of reversible shock and irreversible shock. The mechanisms are given here. You can note from here. Clinical features of Hypovolemic shock. In early stage, there is tachycardia with rapid 3D pulse, sweating, cold clammy skin, hypotension, restlessness, ear hunger with rapid shallow breathing, tachycard tachypnea, oliguria, mental confusion, and collapse pain. In late stage, cyanosis, anuria, and jaundice may be seen. Ass assessment of the patient includes blood pressure measurement, pulse rate, rhythm, and volume, respiratory rate, and depth. Measurement of CBP or PCWP in severe shock. A urine output can be measured. Others include investigations like a complete blood count, ESR, pH assessment, serial blood gases and electrolyte measurement, blood urea, axiom creatinine and others. Guidelines of treatment of shock. To treat the cause, to improve tissue perfusion and to improve cardiac function. Treatment of shock. Stabilization of the patient with initial resuscitation, maintenance of respiration, circulation. Circulation can be maintained with ionotropic agents and plasma normal saline, ringless lactate hardening solution. Prevention of renal failure with uh, catheterization or diuretics if necessary. Correction of acidosis by bicarbonate, sodium bicarbonate solution. Steroid antibiotic can be given and treatment of the underlying cause can be given can be treated. And continuous monitoring of intraarterial pressure, ECG, BNS, pressure, cardiac output, urine output, serial blood gases can be done. And the intravenous fluid that should be prescribed in hypovolemic shock include initially crystalloids and then colloids. Crystalloids include normal saline, Hartman solution, ringer selected. Colloid solutions are albumin or commercially available products. Reasons There is no ideal resuscitation fluid, there is no difference in response or outcome between crystalloid and colloid solution. End of the topic.